Hey all, Scotch Tape here, and welcome back to another super epic, awesome, fun, fun video. And uh, as usual, this video is going to have a topic, so the topic for today's video is going. That's right, today's topic is going to be the infamous case known as Gideon vs. Wainwright. And like all the other videos I've made, this one is going to have different topics in a meme break, so be sure to enjoy that. Also, I plan on uh, uploading this video to YouTube because so yeah, be sure to hunt this down on the internet. So without further ado, let's begin the explanation. It all started in the year 1961. A man by the name of Clarence Earl Gideon was arrested and charged with felony breaking and ending. He presented himself in court, but with no defending counsel in sight. After asking the presiding judge about where his counsel was, he requested for an attorney to be assigned to his case. However, that motion was denied after the judge had said, Mr. Gideon, I am sorry, but I cannot appoint a counsel to represent you in this case. Under the laws of the state of Florida, the only time the court can appoint counsel to represent a defendant is when that person is charged with capital offense. I am sorry, but I will have to deny your quest to appoint counsel to defend you in this case. Unfortunately, at the end of his trial, he was found. Gideon was unfortunately found guilty at the end of his trial, and he was sent to prison. After being sent to prison, Gideon then took advantage of the prison stationery, and he sent a letter of appeal to the Supreme Court of the United States over how atrocious and how ridiculous this charge was, and how he couldn't get his rights. Which now leads us to our next topic, case details. The trial for Gideon vs. Wainwright took place on January 15, 1963, in the Bay County Summit Court. The petitioner for the case was, of course, Clarence Earl Gideon. As for the respondent, it was Louis L. Wainwright, the director of, division of the Division of Corrections representing the state of Florida. Of course, for this case, Gideon had his own representative for the trial. The significance of the case was to determine whether or not the states have to follow federal law. And what Gideon's legal counsel was arguing was that if the state of Florida shouldn't be allowed to disregard these laws, since it is a part of the Union, it was indeed a violation of Gideon's constitutional rights. How did this case end? Well, according to Oyez, 
The Sixth Amendment's guarantee of a right to assistance of counsel applies to the criminal defendants in state court by way of the Fourteenth Amendment. In a unanimous opinion authored by Justice Hugo L. Black, the court held that it was consistent with the con Constitution to require state courts to appoint attorneys for defendants who cannot afford to retain counsel on their own. The court reasoned that the Sixth Amendment guarantee of counsel is a fundamental and essential right made obligatory upon the states by the Fourteenth Amendment. The Sixth Amendment guarantees the accused the right to the assistance of counsel in all criminal prosecutions and requires courts to provide counsels for defendants who are unable to hire counsel unless the right was competently and intelligently waived. Justice Douglas, while joining the court's opinion, elaborated in a separate opinion that the relation between the Bill of Rights and the first section of the 14th Amendment. Justices Clark and Harlan concurred in separate decisions. In other words, this case was found in favor of the petitioner and it established the 14th Amendment, which allowed whatever federal law to be passed to be used by all states, no matter, uh, you know, who does what. As a result of the verdict of the Supreme Court proceeding, Gideon was given the opportunity to do a retrial of his case. And in the end, after being appointed a new counsel, instead of how it turned out in the previous trial, he was acquitted of all charge, well, his only charge, of breaking and entering on a felony level. So he was a free man once again, thanks to the court system. And there you have it, that's Gideon vs. Wainwright. So I hope you all enjoyed this video. I know I didn't tease Julie Abel and, well, I'm gonna, I'm about to tease Mr. Brenner in this video. Yeah, yeah, you heard me, Mr. Brenner, I'm gonna call you out in this video. And don't think you're off the hook yet, Julie and Abel, because I got you too, too. Anyway, yeah, I hope you all enjoyed this video. Uh, shout out to Mr. Brenner for allowing this terrible video to be played in his classroom. Now that makes the second classroom that the terrible videos have been played on. Actually, no, technically third, including Miss King's. So yeah, thanks, thanks for you know watching this. I hope uh, this 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 got uh, uh, this was a good video. If, if I don't get a four on this assignment, I'm going to I'm going to spill oxygen all over your classroom while it might be a four because it's turning on. Okay, oh, so yeah, that's, that's Okay, um, so yeah, that's, that's gonna be it for me, uh, Julie, Abel, uh, dang, I don't have anything to roast you two on, so, um, yeah, I, I guess that's it, so, uh, hope you all enjoyed, I'll see you all there, cause I'm gonna be there, I'm gonna be, uh, cringing at my own video, and yeah, Yasmin, uh, I included that meme for you as well. And as for, as for, hey, hey, you, ladies in the back, yeah, I'm talking to you. I know you were probably talking while this video was playing. Okay, so yeah, don't think you're off the hook. You're, you're getting called out for this. And Raul, I did a better job than you. We can all admit that. Thanks. So yeah, that's it for me. And yeah.